Hey guys, here with Mikey Matute, Philadelphia Phillies. Lorenzo Garman deal with Grand Baseball. Two questions, typical Q&A interview. We're not gonna be like anybody else. We're gonna ask Mikey Matute two questions. He's gotta keep it real. And wherever it goes, wherever it goes. You ready? Ready. First question, marry one, fuck one, kill one, <laughs> go. High school baseball, college baseball, pro baseball. Marry one, fuck one, kill one. Talk to me. Okay, marry one, uh, I'll kill high school baseball. I think it's pointless. I don't think it's, I think it's fun, but I don't think it does things the way baseball is now. I, I think that you get better competition outside of high school. Great point. I think high school baseball is more for like the camaraderie and understanding like, hey, we, your boys and like whatever. But so many guys that get overlooked playing high school baseball because they're not in the summer ball scene or whatever. Very so true. I think that's kind of messed up. Marry one. I, I know think, where you're going. I think I'd marry college. That is a, college baseball is a lot different than pro ball is in the sense of you're grinding every single day with the same dudes. You're going to class, you're working out at 6 a.m. So there's this different type of uh, mentality and there's a different type of like relationship that you have with your boys. And then you go through the games and you're able to learn and grind it. And everything in college is about winning. Like no matter if you're a freshman, junior, sophomore, senior, whatever you are, you're trying to do it whatever you can to win a baseball game. And then pro ball, it's like, you kind of you kind of lose that coming up to the minor leagues because you just want to get to the next level, next level, next level, big leagues. Now you get to the big leagues and you're on a winning team and it's about winning. But even then, before you get to that, you want to do well so you get paid, you can do this, and yeah, you want to win. But that's kind of just a byproduct of trying to get money. Some question on that. So if you went back to college, what would you do different now, or would you have done the same thing? So anything different that you? you and he went to LSU. So in the spirit of the national championship, go Tigers. That's it. LSU Tigers, not Clemson Tigers. Exactly. <laughs> um, I think if I did anything differently, um, I would be more of, I'd be more open-minded at a younger age. Again, in college, I would be more, more open-minded to. Regarding what? Baseball. Just, just like. Baseball or so, life or? No, baseball. So like for me, I always worked my butt off. I was working real hard, but it was like, hey, my coaches are teaching me this. I'm going to do what they're teaching me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the best that I can. And it was great. I had good coaching. I, I was able to develop, and every year I got better and better and better. But I think there was times once I got to once I got to the minor leagues, especially once I got to the big leagues, that I was like, man, there's things that I wish I would have known, known in college so that my mindset would have changed or I would have said, okay, this isn't just, it took me probably three years to say, okay, maybe I do need a little bit of a swing adjustment because which what I'm doing then is, is not what yeah. I'm But I think everybody goes to it. I think that if I was open minded earlier, I would have come to that conclusion quicker. quicker. So we kill high school baseball. Kill high school yeah. baseball. We marry college baseball. Agree. Screw that. Fuck that. Throw ball? That's it, the last one. I mean. So what do you screw about it? What do you say, fuck that, I'm not doing that? Or, or fuck that, I want to do that, or screw that. That just needs to change. Yeah, I think. I think we talked a little bit about why I married college baseball. I think I think pro ball. I wish there had more of a winning atmosphere, like winning culture. It's like, hey, this is what you're from gonna the get -go? from the get go. From the get -go. So you develop that through the minor leagues. You get to the big leagues. So when you're in the big leagues, everybody wants to win and get to the World Series. But there's no World Series in the minor leagues. There's no doing this. You just want to do as well as you can so you can move to the next level so that you can eventually get to the big leagues. But then. Sometimes that takes you three, four, seven years to get to the big leagues. You lose that mentality, mentality. of, and like not every, like everybody's competitive, but like you go and you, yeah, but there's, it's, it's hard because you have guys moving all over the place. You have guys moving up, guys getting sent down, guys getting traded, guys getting released, and guys that you're competing against to get to the big leagues. So it's like some people are, ha, find it hard to have that, mentality of hey we're just doing, doing everything we can to win because they get lost in the fact of trying to move around and get get called up or not lose their spot to somebody else when in reality if you focus solely on winning a baseball game hey i'm going to do whatever i can to win a baseball game you're going to your numbers are going to be better at the end of the year than they were if you were just concentrating strictly on numbers like and that's just the mentality obviously you get to a point where numbers do matter but if you take the selfishness out of it and you, you start being coming unselfish as a baseball player, I think that your talents 
and your numbers, and it's just it's almost like the baseball gods are going to reward you because, hey, you're playing the way you're supposed to be playing. So is it safe to say that the environment of minor league baseball is fucked? It's was broken? That that system needs to get fixed? I don't know, I don't know if, it's, if I would say it's broken because I, I, it's just the nature of the environment. the environment. So, like, if there is a way to fix it, if there's a way for them to say, you know what, we are going to increase it. Now, part of it is you're now a professional. Like, this is your livelihood. You have to go out there and you have to provide for your family, you have to provide for yourself and whatever. And the salary in the minor leagues, if you weren't drafted high or you didn't have... Well, that's environment. That's, but that's what I mean. Yeah, that's, that's all, it all goes so like, these guys are worrying about money and getting to the big leagues because they have to. In college... They're about winning and getting better. Yeah. Like, they don't, they're, they're like, well, I don't have time. I don't have time to wait. I need to make some money. I need to go and do this. So then, you know... In college, you're not worried about that. All you're worried about is, hey, I got to get up and go to school. I'm like, shit, I'm hungover from the night before. I got to go to this class, you know? And after it's, it's class, it's workouts, it's baseball, and it's repeat. You don't have to worry about how I got to pay my bills. I got to do this. I got to do that because you're on scholarship and all that stuff. So It's the environment, definitely the minor league environment. The salaries are so low that you got you know, to worry about even surviving more right. than actually playing and winning. I got to survive. I got to be able to stay here all year. I gotta be able to pay my bills, and then on top of that, I gotta get better. On top of that, I gotta beat up the guy that's next to me. If I have right. Well, and like in college, hey, you're not playing well. You may get sit down on the bench for a little bit, but you're not getting released. Or you're not getting sent down to, you know, double A. You're not getting sent down to triple A. You're, you're there, and you have the ability to say, okay, you know what? I didn't play well for the time. I got benched for a couple weeks, but you have the ability to grind through it and then have the opportunity to play again in the same level. So that's. They give you have time to learn and, and get through it and adjust. Now it's you know obviously the nature of sports are different. I'll ask you a question before that. If, you, if, if right now you're in high school, so you're, high school kids listen to this or high school parents listen to this, and they got to make the, you know the ultimate decision when you're in high school if you're a prospect is do I go to college or do I go to pro ball? With what you know now, for you I think it's going to be it was an easy one. You wanted to go to LSU. What would you say to a, 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 somebody that was in your position in high school? So. Everybody's different. Everybody thinks of things differently. Everybody's come up differently. For me personally, I value. Huh? Yeah. So for me personally, I valued my experience at LSU and what I learned and how the person I became in college. I value that at two million plus. So if I was out of high school and I got drafted and I didn't, if I didn't get offered two million plus, I wasn't gonna sign. Like you could have given me 1.8 million. That's a lot of money, but. I would set it at two and I would go to school because what I learned in school and the people that I met and the opportunities that I got, I'm not going to get that in professional baseball. I'm going to go and I'm going to grind through it. I'm going to, you're going to, you're, you're, you may not, I'm not saying you're never going to make it to the big leagues because you, you might as well, you may, you know, it, it could happen. But as a person and as a man, I'm not going to become the person that I became because of, but that's just me. Everybody's different. Is it because of the environment of LSU? If let's say I'm not going to LSU, but I'm going to Mississippi, Stanford, USC, Michigan, right. am I going to get that same? So there's some school, there's schools have in different environments, obviously. Uh, for me, I was born and raised in Louisiana, so going there was, was great. It was something I always dreamed about doing. But the atmosphere and the, and the culture of Louisiana in itself is just very welcoming, and it's generous, and it's, hey man, what can we do to make you feel good and what can we do to make you feel comfortable? And that's kind of just the people. Like if you met somebody in New Orleans you didn't know, all they would want to be like, hey, you need to go try this restaurant, you need to go do this. They, they're, they want to help, right? They just want to be generous with their time and like, hey, Louisiana's part of them and like that's their home, they want you to enjoy their home and that's, that's it. Um, but you, get, you get that culture other places, um, but I think that part of that is you have to really, when you go on your visits, Everything is going to be roses and rainbows on your visit because they're throwing out the red carpet. But look past the just initial, like, hey, this is where I'm going. This is what they have. Look into maybe, hey, how do the guys act together? Like, how do they, or is it, is it very clicky? Do they have, like, four guys here, three guys here, and kind of doing their own thing? Or do they, they go out and hang out together as a team? Like, you're not going to like everybody on your team, but you want to be able to respect everybody on your team. So if these, if these guys are hanging out as a team and they're doing stuff together, like, hey, we're going out to the bars 
and there's 15 of them, they run 15 deep, that's different than, hey, we're going to go to the bars and like, oh, you got like three or four guys here. Like, that's really the only three guys that go out or do stuff or hang out together. You know. One more question in regards to that. So one of the things, you know, so we get to travel the whole country. One of the things I look at, and I was really impressed with LSU, is I always look at how many guys played there and come back. Right. So one of the things that I saw at LSU was, hell, you guys have your own locker there. Yeah. So anybody that's played Major League Baseball at LSU has a locker in the training facility for you guys to come back. When I look at a college and I talk to parents now, or I'll talk to a kid, I'm going to say, man, go check out in the offseason who comes back and hangs out there. Right. Think about it. If you liked your experience, if you liked what you went through, if you felt that it was great for you, absolutely you go back in the offseason. If nobody goes back, and I don't go back to my school, and I know we have a couple clients that, you know, they don't go back to their colleges. It's stepping stone for them. It was That's a stepping stone they didn't feel like they were taken care of or that the school had their best interests at heart. Right. Is that fair to say? Right. No, yeah, for sure. And like I said, everybody's different and every experience is different. I mean, there's guys that went to LSU that didn't like it. You know, like, there's guys that went to school now that's maybe because they didn't play or maybe because, you know, they did something and coach kind of wasn't on their, like, whatever. But everybody's experiences are different. I just think that the majority of the guys, like you said, if you go look at the guys that come in, like, there's guys that I've played with. We have a group text on, our, like, the group me app. And in that group text, there's... 25 guys in that group text and all 25 of those guys or probably 24 of the 25 of those guys played baseball at LSU and so out of those out of those 24 there's probably 15 16 that actually played together on the same team when we won the national championship and then the other ones were either a couple a year before or like after and like the only reason that we're all boys is because of LSU baseball and like that fraternity and that camaraderie that we build like hey you played before I did but you were friends with someone I played with we got intertwined we're now we're friends of friends and now we're boys because we have the same interests and we have the same culture so it's I think well, that's what makes it different when it comes to that you're getting married congratulations that's thank you up. yep how many former players from LSU are going to be there again? Huh. uh shit I mean there's going to be Coach I mean, Maneri Coach Maneri okay. Javi Chuck Hollywood Hollywood's going to be there Chuck uh, I mean, you got Renato, Jay Mitch, Gip. I mean, you have, there'll probably be 20 plus old former guys. Kind of yeah. Okay, great. Let's, let's cut to something else even more important. Here we go. What do you need to stop doing? What do you need to start doing? And what do you need to keep doing in regards to your baseball career? I think what I need to stop doing is I need to stop putting as much, too much, as more pressure on myself than needs to be. So, you're never gonna be perfect. You're never gonna, you know, I mean, you're not always gonna be perfect. Yeah, you're not always gonna succeed. So, when those times that you aren't succeeding come come about, you want to be able to to not allow it to let you tail spin or or landslide down. You know, like I'm an emotional player. Like I play hard. Like I'm very competitive, but I'm also my hardest critic. So. You know, sometimes when I go and have a bad at bat, like, I just let that go. You know, stop dwelling on it or stop worrying about what's going to happen. Stop worrying about the future results. Worry about what's kind of going in now. That's what I want to I stop worrying about what I can't control. Because you can't control that. Right. Man. You're in an industry, so think about it. If I'm a lawyer, and I always say this, so if I'm a lawyer and I'm in seven out of my ten cases, I'm out of business. If I'm a doctor and I've got ten patients and seven of them die, yeah. I'm not very fucking good. Right. But if I'm a baseball player, a position player, and I strike out seven out of ten and I get three hits, I'm an all-star. Right. So what other industry are you in that you can have so much failure and still do very well? Right. So absolutely from a mental standpoint, you're going to fail. Like you're going to go in today going, you know what, I might not get a hit. And it's okay. Right. But I, you know, tomorrow is another day. So, you know, just keep grinding at it. Okay, so we stop doing that. What do you keep want to keep doing? So what I want to keep doing is I want to keep educating myself on ways to improve me as a one person and two as a player. So hitting, what we're doing here is I'm educating myself. I've, I've always had the talent, I've always had the ability, I've even had success. But what I'm doing now is I'm understanding the ins and outs of my swing. I'm understanding the science behind my swing and why something happens. So, you know, by doing that, I'm able to, okay, I'm struggling, I did this, this was the result of why, why did that happen? Now I have the answer of why it happened and the fix right 
I don't just have the, hey, I'm doing this. I understand, okay, maybe I know why I'm doing it, but I don't know how to fix it. So that comes with self-awareness and education. That's, I mean, an education of your swing. And that's really anything. That's in health, that's in life, that's in family, that's always doing stuff to, to better you. And that's kind of where I'm at and what I've been doing the last few years, really the last couple of years, but more so last year of like, hey, all right, look, I had some tough times and like, I'm not where I needed to be sometimes, but which happens to there's everybody. everybody. Everybody goes through it. So if you're not, if you're, if you, if you just accept it, it's the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Which I was about to tell you, number one book for you. Yeah. Which I know was for me. It was, it was a game changer in my yeah. mindset. Harold Black, Stanford professor. If you haven't read the book, it's a great read because you start understanding what an open mindset is versus a fixed mindset. Okay. So we know what you need to stop. You know what you need to keep. What do you need to start doing? So what I need to start doing is I think I need coffee? love Cuban coffee. Sure, you gotta keep start <laughs> doing that. I so for me, I a lot of my like one of my biggest assets coming up and getting drafted and coming to the minor leagues was just my like childlike love for the game. Right, I still love the game more than anything. I don't has never changed. But I think what I what I lost along the way was the fact that it is a game and the competitiveness of the game and like that's what I had fun doing was laughing, smiling, being on the field playing and the game. playing the game. And I think over the last couple of years, I let everything else around me consume me and I was I kind of lost that a little bit. So I guess I don't want to put it in the keep doing because I kind of lost it. So I want to start doing that again. Is like I'm basically is basically saying you know what like. I'm playing this game that not that one percent of the entire world less is than less than one percent is able to do at the level that I'm doing it at. So enjoy it, have fun. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Enjoy where you're at, and everything else is going to take care of itself. And that's what I'll start doing again. Awesome. Yeah. Mike and the two guys, Philadelphia Phillies. Now, something different on a Q and A. You know how it is out there. Everybody's saying, "Hey, don't trust the media. Don't trust the reporters. Don't trust this." Well, how about this, Mike? You get to ask me a question. Shoot. So, you've done this for a long time, right? How 15 long? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. So, in those fifteen years, you know a lot more now, at this point in your career, than you did. Like you've grown, you've oh, you've developed, right? What is your biggest regret early on in, in starting this, and what do you wish you could have done to where that you would have gotten to this point earlier than you are now? Great question. And I'll tell you, that's a great question. Here's, I got a good answer for that, I think. I never played baseball. So coming up, when I started doing this, I had a lot of detractors. I had a lot of people saying, of course. you're fucking crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. And then I started fighting a lot of battles that I shouldn't have fought. I didn't have to. Like, if you didn't believe what I was doing, so be it. Move on. My time got consumed with arguing with a high school coach on what the swing should be instead of saying, look, bro, if you don't believe it, that's fine. We know what the right way to do it. And I'm sure it consumed you afterwards. Like, you Absolutely. thought about it after the fact, yeah. Absolutely. So instead of me progressing earlier and quicker, uh, it's like a little thing that says, if you want to get somewhere, don't stop and throw a, a rock at every dog that barks. Right. I would stop and throw a rock at every yeah. dog that barks. I was fighting battles that I didn't need to fight. Like, just keep doing your thing. Eventually, we're going to have the success that you we were going to have. It could have been done quicker if I stopped trying to sell the unsellable or convince someone that just didn't want to be convinced. All right. Can I add one more to that? Sure. What, when did you realize, like, how did you come to the realization that this is how the swing should be? And, like, when did you figure out, like, man, they're teaching this thing and wrong? Like, what, what brought you to that realization and how did you, like, figure out how to fix it? Well, it was, I don't think it was a one-day aha moment. I was, you know, I had a little bit of a mathematical background, and you know, my sons played. So, you know, my oldest son got drafted to play college ball. My middle son was a pitcher. My younger son played college ball. They all played high school ball, travel ball. The whole, we did the whole thing, and I was realizing that they would go to a hitting lesson. I would take them. I had friends, in major league coaches, and any other coaches. They go to a hitting lesson, and what the coach was saying, a mathematically didn't make sense. And in the game, they weren't getting the result. So you say, well, wait a minute. A, either the player's not good, but then B, is the information he's getting he's not understanding. Right. Or now C, is the information he's getting not the right information. Right. And that's what got me curious. 
okay, let's check all three. Maybe he's not that good. Maybe, you know, he doesn't understand what they're telling him. Or maybe, you know what? Maybe they're telling him the wrong thing. Right. And it happened to be that they were telling him the wrong thing. Right. Now launch angle. Back when you said it was 08, 07, 08. Crazy. Nobody would even talk Nobody about it. Nobody talked about launch angle, but you knew that the swing was wrong. And you knew yeah. that. So you started teaching this type of swing before everybody started talking about launch angle and exit velo and all of these different things. Well, I got a question for you. How many times did you hear, get on top of the ball, hit the ball on the ground? Yeah, they say line drive ground balls, like hard ground balls. You know now, ground balls are out. So yeah. You can't be successful. You can say line drives. Hey, you hit line drives. That's one thing. But to get on top of the ball, and that's what we talk about. So. You say get your hands on top of the ball. You go above the ball, the hands don't go on top. Of right, you don't. Your barrel is not on top of the ball. When they say hands on top of the ball, you automatically think get the barrel on top, which means it's just going to come this way and down and across. When you say hands above the ball, well the ball's up here. Your hands are above it. Now your barrel is lagging exactly. But you were teaching that before people started coming out and saying. Oh, please, and everybody thought it, you know, I always go back to this. So think about this. They used to say the world is flat. But where did you get where did you get those like numbers or stats or information to like validate what you're teaching well, okay, so because they didn't have all that when you're back then so first and foremost exit veto so everybody talks about hitters like uh hey he's got fast hands you've heard that oh he's got fast hands he's got fast hands you start realizing that the guys that have the fastest hands don't have the most exit veto right so when you look at the equation of force equals mass times acceleration and you do an exit veto test which i did back in the day with a radar gun we didn't have rap soda or track or anything you start realizing like bro it isn't how fast your hands are is are you using your body to swing the back. Right. Once you see that and understand that, then all the other myths go out the door. Because now my hands aren't swinging the back, my legs are, my torso, my shoulders. Right. Everything is swinging the back. Now I can create force into the ball vis a vis it's going to. Your body is just more efficient. Oh, no. Getting your body as efficient as you can, yeah, for sure. And then during all that time, so here, here how about this? Like, we all have doubts. I mean, you know how you had doubts in your career? Uh huh. So every day I would want somebody to say, hey man, you're full of shit. Like debate, like yeah. my, my son said, you like to pick fights. And that's what I was talking about. Well, you learn from well, that. To me, it was like I was, throwing a, I was throwing a rock at every doctor bar. So I wanted to pick a fight. I wanted you to tell me, hey, you're fucking wrong. And I would say, no, this is why I'm right. You know, la, 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 you know, yada, 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 debate that. And they wouldn't have an answer. So it got to the point where, like, dude, it, it, anybody that we worked with started to hit. So we understood that it was right. I, three in the morning, four in the morning. What are you doing? What do you do at three or four? Sleeping. I'm watching video. Right. I'm, you know, I'm learning. I'm, you know, this was going on. Like I tell everybody, like when, when the iPhone was invented, do you think they just made one, and that's the one we got to buy, or they made ten thousand of them that went to the trash heap, and then we got the right. Phone. Right. Same thing. Same thing. Two thousand eight. Shit. This needs to change. Yeah. Man, this. No, this is right. No, this is wrong. I mean, the arguments that I would have in the cage with my kids or some other guys, hey, my coach is telling me this, no, it ain't this, let's do this, and then trial and error, trial and error. And understanding how to relate to that person. So, as a, for me as a hitter, it's hard. People are telling you, a lot of people know what they're trying to say, what they're telling you. Like, you know, a lot of people are telling you some of the right things. They just, terminology registers differently with different people. So... For me, having those arguments for you and like having these conversations and like, hey, what are you feeling? Well, that's what I'm feeling. Well, don't say that. Well, I get what you're saying, but saying, hey, maybe hands above the ball doesn't work for me. Maybe hands above the ball doesn't click for me. Maybe instead of saying hands above the ball, you have a different terminology. Or instead of saying, like we, we talked about, hey, I want you to stay through the ball and I want you to get your back shoulder through it. For me, it was like, hey, make sure I get this back shoulder through my chin. That was worked for me, you know, and it doesn't work for everybody. So. I think over the years of you being able to do that, was able, you're able to say, okay, you know what? I'm teaching, I'm gonna be able to teach the same philosophy and the same technique and the same, how to, how to hit the same way, but I'm able, I'm able to learn different terminology and how different people think, so then I can relate to them that way. Well, and, and you bring up a good point, because at the end of the day, I think going back to mindset, man, I'm telling you, I look at a point like, if you're not successful, I'm responsible. That, when, when you start thinking like that, it just opens up everything. All right. It's easy for me to say, man, this fucking, you know, this guy doesn't listen. Everybody likes to blame the player. I always saw that. Why are we, why are we always blaming the player? Like, let's say, like, I remember there was a high school in, in Miami where the guy hadn't won a district title in 30 years. He's a coach for 30 years. Well, fuck. Does he have 30 years of bad players? Right. Does he have 30 years of a bad fucking system? Right. Which one is it? Right. 
you start saying shit, man, it ain't the fucking blame. Well, people like to blame other people because they take responsibility off themselves. Exactly. So what we did is, like, bro, if they don't hit, so getting back to your point, like, if you didn't hit, I have to, I have to find out what, what communicates with you, what clicks for you. So if it doesn't click, I don't look at it like, okay, he's got to understand what I'm saying. I think my brain works. Well, I got to do something for him to understand. But on the other side of that, the player has to be open to working and doing what you're telling them. If, if you're every day, all day working to try to get this guy to hit, and he's not putting in the work on his end, and he's not doing the things that he should be doing, he's never going to hit. Well, how about this, man? And this is, you bring up that, and this is great. I personally have not met, met a professional player that doesn't want to get better. Absolutely. I personally haven't met them. Right. Some work more than others. Right. Some go about their business different, but I've never had a player say, fuck that, I don't want to get better. Right. Everybody wants to get better, but some people don't. Like, when you're working me and you or someone else and you in the cage one-on-one, -on -one, it's easy because you're telling, you're, you're doing stuff, you're telling me for three days, four days. This kid goes home, he gets back into his routine, and one day it turns into two days, two days turn into three days. I'm going to go hit barely, but then I don't really... I'm really not going to focus on what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to hit. He's, they're never going to improve, and, you, and it's, it's never going to be. It's not. It, you're going to put the pressure on yourself. Of course. But in reality, it's you're doing everything you can possibly do to help this kid. And this kid wants to get better. He just doesn't. He just needs to learn how to work harder. Well, then I got a question for you. Don't you think part of the culture or the environment that a teacher should provide is accountability and make sure that yes, one hundred percent. So like, hey, mofo, you're not working. Yeah. Like, hey. You know, you own this process also. Like, when, so right. you see a guy that hasn't swung in a week. Yeah. You see it. Now, hey, shit happens. Hey, why haven't you swung in a week? Well, this and this. Okay, let's get back on the road. Yeah. But I think as, a, as an instructor, as a teacher, and the word teaching has really come by the wayside, I think our job is to hold the person that we're working with also accountable. 100%. Be accountable, but I got to hold you accountable that you're putting yep. your work. Now, after that, you don't want to do it, then for sure, yeah. Yeah, you're out. Go do something else. Yeah. And you're not willing to put the work in. 100%. Yep. I want to tell you it's been a pleasure this year. Always. Let's kick some ass. Let's do it. Congratulations on the wedding. Thank you. Grab right on baseball, Dolly.